Hi everyone, Dr. Mark here. In this video, we're gonna talk about deep sea diving physiology. Have you ever heard of the bends or nitrogen sickness? Well, we're gonna talk about all this. But before we begin, we need to talk about what happens when we normally breathe. Now, I've got a column of atmosphere and water right here. You can see outside, we have the nice sun and clouds and birds, and what we have around us are a multitude of gases. In actual fact, we have around about 78, 79% of the gases around us being nitrogen. We have around about 20 1% of the gases being oxygen and around about 0.05% being carbon dioxide and the rest just being trace gases all surrounding us. And all these gases are placing a certain amount of pressure on us right now. That pressure we term as being a single atmosphere or one atmosphere and that pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so if we were to have a box filled with one liter of atmosphere or gas. I want you to picture it as being our lungs. Now in actual fact, inside of our lungs, you will find that around about 75% of it is nitrogen, 13.5% of it is oxygen, and 5.3% of it is carbon dioxide. This is a bit different to what's happening in the external atmosphere. I want you to think about that. I breathe in, the nitrogen barely changes. It's still around about 75, 78% nitrogen, but the oxygen level is lower in the alveoli or our lungs compared to the atmosphere. Why? Because that oxygen jumps into our bloodstream, so it disappears out of our lungs. The carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere at 0.05%, but in our lungs it's 5.3%, significantly higher. Why? Because carbon dioxide jumps from our blood into our lungs, increasing that concentration. So we've got that one litre box, right, at a single atmosphere. So we're at sea level and it's 75% nitrogen. The pressure is 570 millimetres of mercury. We have 13.5% of it being oxygen and the pressure is 104 uh, millimetres of mercury. And the Carbon dioxide percentage is 5.3% and the pressure for that is 40 millimetres of mercury. Now think about it. This is our lungs and we've got the blood going through. What do we want to happen here? Well, we want to take oxygen from the lungs, throw it into the blood and deliver it to the tissues of our body. Now the only way that a gas can move from point A to point B is if the pressure at point A is higher than point B and it can jump downhill. That means gases will only move from a high pressure towards a low pressure. So in order for oxygen to go from the lungs into the blood, the pressure here needs to be higher. So let's have a look, it's 104 millimeters of mercury, and in the blood going past, it is 40 millimeters of mercury. 100 down to 40, oxygen can jump down into the blood and be transported to the tissues. Perfect. What about carbon dioxide? Well, we wanna get rid of carbon dioxide. It's a byproduct. Our tissues take glucose, and oxygen produce ATP and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, we don't wanna keep in our blood because it's acidic. So we put it into the blood, bring it back to the lungs, and it needs to jump from the blood into the lungs. Again, it must go downhill. Let's have a look. In the blood, it's 45 millimeters of mercury. In the lungs, it's 40. So it is going downhill, it jumps out. Now, did you know the same amount of oxygen will jump from the lungs to the blood as carbon dioxide jumps from the blood to the lungs? But I told you that it only does this due to pressure differences. And the pressure difference of oxygen from the lungs to the blood is 104 compared to 40. That's quite steep, right? 104 compared to 40. And for carbon dioxide, it's 45 compared to 40. It's less steep. So how does this work? Why is there equivalent amounts? Because carbon dioxide is far more soluble than oxygen. And what that means is it loves to dissolve in the fluids of the lungs and the fluids of the blood, which means you don't have to give it as much of a push in order for, for it to cross that respiratory membrane. Oxygen isn't actually that soluble at all. You'll find that not much oxygen is dissolved in our blood, okay? Hardly any is dissolved in the blood. Most of it, if not nearly all of it, well, most of it, I should say, is bound to hemoglobin, okay? Red blood cells. All right, nitrogen, 570 millimetres of mercury in the lungs, 570 millimetres of mercury in the blood. Well, there's not much difference. There's not much of a pressure change. Therefore, nitrogen doesn't care about going back and forth at all. In actual fact, at one atmosphere, you have around about a litre of nitrogen dissolved in the blood, but it, it's not really going to go into our tissues. It doesn't like going into our tissues. All right. Now, what happens is as we start to dive, so we're diving now, we've jumped off the boat, we're going down to 10 metres. At 10 metres, we've actually now got two atmospheres of pressure on us. What you'll find is for every 10 metres, 
add an additional atmosphere of pressure onto us, okay? That's equivalent to 33 feet. Every 33 feet or 10 meters, add another atmosphere. The important thing about this is, if I go down 10 meters and add another atmosphere, what that means is, if I have a liter of gas, add one atmosphere, you've halved the amount of gas inside of that box because the amount of pressure that's been placed on that gas. If you go down to three atmospheres, you're going to decrease that volume by a third. If you go down to four atmospheres, which is 30 meters, okay, go down four atmospheres, which is 30 meters, you'll find that you've changed it to a quarter, the volume. So you've only got 0.25 liters. What that means is I take a breath in, fill my lungs with one liter of gas, I start diving down, by the time I'm at 30 meters, that one liter of gas in my lungs is only 250 milliliters, okay? That means because all the pressure being placed on that gas. Now let's have a look and see what happens here at four atmospheres down at 30 meters. What happens is this, because the pressure is so great, it's increased the pressure of nitrogen from 570 to 2500. Now think about that. 2,500 means there's a very strong push for nitrogen to go from the lungs into the blood. And so at four atmospheres, instead of having four liters of nitrogen, uh, instead of having one liter of nitrogen in the blood, we now have four liters of nitrogen pushed into the blood. What about oxygen? Instead of it being 104, we've now got 450 being pushed into the blood. And so now we've got way more oxygen dissolved in the blood as well. What about carbon dioxide? The levels for carbon dioxide haven't changed. Even if I deep dive 30 meters, four atmospheres, why does the carbon dioxide levels not change? Because unlike nitrogen and oxygen, these gases, nitrogen and oxygen, come from the atmosphere. That's why we have these numbers. But the numbers for carbon dioxide comes from our body, comes from the tissues of our body. They produce the carbon dioxide. And our body tissues aren't producing any more carbon dioxide. It doesn't matter how deep we go, the tissues will still produce the same amount of carbon dioxide. So that actually doesn't change. So you don't really get carbon dioxide sickness, but you can get oxygen sickness and nitrogen sickness. Now this is what happens. You push more oxygen into the bloodstream, you push more nitrogen into the bloodstream. And nitrogen, being inert, I said it doesn't like going to the tissues at one atmosphere, but now at four atmospheres, we've got so much nitrogen in the blood that it gets pushed into the tissues, okay? Now this can cause similar to drunkenness. So people feel like they're drunk, silly, they laugh, jovial, or if you go deeper and deeper and deeper, even deeper than 30 meters, they can lose all capacity to be able to function, okay? This is that nitrogen sickness. But the other important thing is, let's just say you go down to 10, 30 meters, the nitrogen's dissolved in your blood. Now what happens, so that means the pressure's high. What happens when you decide to ascend back up? The pressure starts to decrease. Think about this, you go to the shops, you buy a bottle of soft drink. Can you see the bubbles in that soft drink bottle? You can't. Squeeze it, it's under high pressure. So inside that bottle, there's high pressure, just like being deep down in the ocean. You can't see the bubbles because they're dissolved in under high pressure. But what happens when you relieve the pressure? You open the lid to that bottle, just like going up, what happens? You form bubbles because you're releasing the pressure. And as you go up, nitrogen bubbles start to form. These nitrogen bubbles can go to the brain and can result in a stroke, okay? Now, oxygen is being pushed at high concentrations into the tissues and can result in oxygen toxicity as well. Too much oxygen will damage the cells of the body, okay? So this is a quick run through of deep sea diving gas physiology.